This week in Nerf, we've got a new Modulus Blaster, the Toys R Us situation gets worse, and a wrist-mounted blaster. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first-party, third-party, and community Nerf news. Diving right on in. Toys R Us, it seems like we can't go a week without talking more about their situation. Last week was about the UK and their uh, demise or downturn, as we, I guess we can look at it. And now back here in the US, things are looking worse and worse as it appears they are getting ready to enter liquidation and potentially close all stores in the US. That's over 800 stores, I believe, on top of the 180 they were closing when they announced the beginning of this year. Uh, this is just a whole big thing that it just continues to get worse. Nothing is going right for Toys R Us right now. And while a lot of that is on them, uh, some of it is just the way the market is turning as well. What's, what's interesting to note about this and why it's so important and so huge is that Toys R Us shutting down is a huge blow to toy companies like Hasbro, which produces Nerf, and Mattel, which does Boomco, even if they haven't been doing a ton with that lately. Um, toys R Us accounts for 15 to 20 percent of all toy sales in the U.S. That's a lot of blasters. That's that's a lot, a lot of things. So it actually hurts companies, and it really, really hurts companies that are smaller such as Busby and other third-party kind of companies, oh, not third-party, but not Hasbro or Mattel, not the largest name companies, brands that are trying to get their blasters out in stores and in the hands of kids to grow their brand recognition. The lack of Toys R Us to do that, which has ample shelf space for these other companies, is a huge, huge detriment. While we will still have Target and Walmart for these things, Toys R Us was the biggest vendor for these kind of brands, and it's a huge blow to them. So that's why this is such an important topic to talk about and bring up, and it's why I've continued to do so throughout the last few weeks and months even. And I want to talk a little bit more about why this happened and what happened with it. Uh, basically, back in 2005, uh, Toys R Us was bought out for $7.5 billion, or essentially they were put in $7.5 billion of debt. And the idea was that over the years they'd be able to kind of work through that and get things back, but a series of mismanagement and uh, the inability to transition to online sales has really hindered Toys R Us on top of their prices that are higher than everywhere else. So just in all facets, they really weren't able to keep up and their lack of funding prevented them from making the necessary changes to adapt online and this just it's just been a snowball effect that has really really turned out to be a terrible terrible prospect for the company and for the toy industry as a whole um now it's not 100 percent sealed that toys r us has gone and done uh but it's looking less and less likely that they'll be able to get any sort of restructuring for their debt or if someone will come in and buy them to keep them afloat. That's what people are hoping for, uh, but it looks like things could start going downhill in terms of the liquidation process starting as early as next week. So, I don't know, fingers crossed here that something will happen, some miracle will pop up in terms of the business and uh, they'll be able to readjust and restructure and get things going the right way, but... Things aren't looking great for brick and mortar as a whole, so they're definitely going to have to transition to online at the very least. But uh, it's not great news to bring to everybody, but I wanted to kind of inform you and go a little bit more in-depth than I had in past episodes now that it's looking more and more like a possibility or probability that it's going to be going out of business completely here in the U.S. We still don't know what's going to happen in terms of Canada because they did file for the bankruptcy protection, I believe, at the same time as the U.S. did. Uh, we know the U.K. is suffering in terms of Toys R Us. However, uh, overseas in Asia, it appears to be doing all right. So if you're over there, you may be okay. You may still have Toys R Us. And I hope, at the very least, it stays alive there because Toys R Us is such a big brand uh, and so recognized and iconic that I kind of don't want to see it go the way of KB Toys. But that's just kind of where things are at right now. And if more news develops on it, I will, of course, 
keep you all updated. But I did provide a link down below to a Bloomberg article kind of going over some of the details if you want to take a look at that. Let's go ahead and move on to something else a little bit better and brighter and more fun. And this is the Modulus Demolisher. That's right, the Demolisher is getting an update for the Modulus line. This comes to us from Make Test Battle, who was at the uh, Toy Fair Australia recently and found this blaster that just suddenly popped up. Now, uh, I think some with some digging done, we, we were lacking something at one of the other toy fairs here in the US, which was this Modulus accessory pack that was $100 or listed as $100 retail. Uh, we didn't really see that get showcased, and I think this is it. I think that's what we're looking at is the Demolisher accessory package because it comes with a ton of accessories and the Demolisher, which has that original Modulus paint scheme. I hope they're going back to that for everything so that you can keep some consistency in the lines. That's one of my biggest problems is they keep producing different colors, and I like that we're going back to the original. Just stick with something. Stick with something so the accessories all fit and match and, and make sense, you know? Uh, but I'm glad to see it. And this has some interesting stuff with it, along with like a, a long shot or a long strike scope or rather sight, I should say. Um, and some other stuff. The interesting parts to me are the demolisher missile holder that goes on the side or actually it has a rail adapter that looks like it turns into a U shape. So you can put it on a top rail and have it fold over and have more rail access for accessories, which is super cool. And then you've got a stock that looks like it has a, a mag retention ability. So there's a lot going on with this kit, and I really think it's cool. I think it's awesome, and I like that they're, they're trying to go for something uh, bigger, I suppose you could look at it in that way. It, it's, it's got some appeal to it in terms of the box and all the options, accessories you get. Kids are going to love this. I would probably love this, to be quite honest. I think it's cool. Uh, that we're getting more stuff that's not only interesting looking, but functional. So the kids that are getting these will have accessories that do something useful on top of just look, looking cool. So that's definitely a plus in my book. And big thanks to Make This Battle for sharing this with all of us. And uh, actually, Justin got me these images to use for today, which is awesome. A big thank you to him. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's cool that we're seeing this, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else the Modulus line has in the future if it continues to add more functional accessories. Because remember, while we may not like all of the Modulus accessories, before the Modulus line came out, all we did was ask for more accessories. All we did was more ask for more stocks, more, more stuff that we could use to uh, make our blasters our own. And now we're getting them. It took some time to kind of figure things out, I guess, in terms of what they wanted to give, but now we're getting things that are functional. Sure, they're not going to be as sturdy or solid as something like a uh, maybe a worker product or something like that, but the fact is Hasbro is listening and they are doing things. So big props to them for that, and I'm looking forward to seeing what these are like in hand. And we got one other thing to talk about today before we move on to our of the week segment, and that is the OFP Katana Mag Adapter. Uh, this actually went live a couple weeks ago, and I just didn't get a chance to talk about it, but it is, uh, it is something I really wanted to talk about, so I'm bringing, uh, bringing it up now. And uh, this is a forward adjusted Katana Mag Adapter. So now the Katana Magazines will not sit in the middle of the magwell, but rather in the front of the magwell. And that is a huge thing for certain uh, setups, such as the Prophecy, where it can't really handle that middle uh, setting for the darts. They need to be pushed forward to, to go into the breach properly. So that is a huge, huge thing. And what's really cool to me is he has he set this up so it will work with Flywheels of Strife, specifically in this video that he showed that I will link down below. Uh, he actually designed a uh, extended pusher so that it will reach the darts forward facing and push them into the Flywheels. This is super cool to me. This is something I am definitely going to be getting my hands on and trying with my Strife. I've got my Katana mags, I've got my worker darts. Um, I really wanna run this at a game. Now, it's important to note you are going to get uh, lowered FPS in flywheel setups with short darts because there is not as much time, I believe, for the flywheels to grip the dart, the foam, and to you know transfer the energy and fling the dart out. That is my very limited understanding of why you will get slightly lower FPS, but 
you have the improved stability of the short darts in the air, and that is absolutely awesome. I'm super stoked about that. I cannot wait to try this. Uh, link to, like I said, the video down below and the um, Google Drive page where you can get these files and have them printed. And uh, I, I think this is super cool and definitely looking forward to trying it out. Now, unfortunately, there's no mod of the week. Uh, I reached out to some someone about mod of the week, did not hear back in time. Uh, maybe next week I'll be able to talk about it. Uh, but my apologies for that. I do, however, however, have a video of the week. And this is a video from Boomstick Mods. And this is the Modular Wrist Blaster. This is something that I saw. It was like, this is just cool. This is, I, we could call this mod of the week too, since we don't have an official mod of the week. But uh, this is a video going over a modified drain blaster that instead of being the actual blaster itself is just a pump that sits on a belt or a molly platform that's vertical that you can pump up and then on your wrist you have a tube going from the drain blaster down to the wrist that has the blaster portion and when you release it shoots the darts out and I just think that's so cool having a wrist mounted blaster that allows you to still use another blaster in your hand and you can have you know a different kind of accessory on here say you want to shoot mega darts which is what he has it set up for right now or maybe I'm sure he'll adjust it in the future for demolisher rockets or an absolver shell all kinds of things I think this is just super cool and uh, I hope to see more that he does with it in the future. So if you want to take a look at that, he talks through the process a, a little bit. And I look forward to seeing more of this in the future. That video is going to be linked down below. And I'll have it right here when we get to the end of the video, which is coming right up. But if you do go over there, let him know I sent you. If you enjoy the video, hit the subscribe button over there. See what he's going to be up to. And uh, that is actually going to bring us to the end of the video. And that's going to be right over if you want to watch that. Let me know what you thought of everything this week. Toys R Us going out of business potentially. The new Modulus Demolisher. Uh, the Katana Mags. The, mo the video of the week. All of it. Let me know in the comments. I love hearing from all of you. If you have videos of the week or mods that you think should be of the week, leave them in the comments down below as well. I love hearing from all of you. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button for the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular. And I'll see you next time.